Hello and welcome to another episode of The Practice Odyssey. I'm Jen. And I'm Alex. And we join you again. This is a rather uh, late time uh, podcast uh, we're doing right now. It's nearly midnight at my time. This is the joys of intercontinental podcasting, people. But Alex... We are here. We are here ready to finish our episode on Sharon Sparrow, TBC. Yeah, the six weeks to finals. So for those listeners tuning in now, Jen and I did the six weeks to finals book from Sharon Sparrow. In our last episode, part one, we talked about the first three weeks. Since normally on here, we do a fortnight's worth of work and then report back to you, our listeners. And this week, we're going to fill you in on the final three weeks, our audition and our verdict. Does it stay on the stand or not? And without much further ado, Jen, let's just hop into this. So we are currently on week three right? So week four, we organized our mock auditions. And what I have in my notes is that I used to, I would practice through the list of excerpts every day. So, which would take quite a long time. And I was getting pretty exhausted, I think is where we left off. (laughs) Um, Where were you last time we were chatting? I think I was in the same space as in, it was just uh, quite a lot of work. Yeah. (laughs) Quite a lot of work doing all of the naughty lists. We're not just playing the excerpts now, we're also playing... Well, she recommends playing through the entire movement or the entire right. piece to get the whole context of it. Yeah. Oh, yes, doing the two tea parts yeah, as well. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of fun because you get to do the... Um, Bit of sight right Like now. flute karaoke because <laughs> she says she can do it, you know, with the recording, <laughs> yeah. which is always fun and very eye-opening. It is very eye-opening. But yeah. also it is... <laughs> I, I remember one time I did this. Luckily for this excerpt list there wasn't as many but in the past I once had an audition that I had 20 excerpts on and I think it took me like two or three hours just to get through oh you know just to get through the whole thing oh my gosh so how was your week three how how was I what did you get up to for week three it was good I mean like again it was kind of similar in like pretty hefty amounts of stuff to do because you're Mm -hmm. continuing to like practice all of the excerpts um the whole way through with you know and then also like to start researching about the pieces in the background which is great but you know again Mm. like it takes a bit of time to 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 like learn all that and start looking into it I mean it's really interesting and I did actually find that really enriching like I loved I loved discovering all these new things which I didn't know about the pieces in the background and what was happening in the composer's life when he was mm-hmm. when he was um writing it and yeah yeah no it was really uh that was really cool I did appreciate that however yeah it is oh man yeah it just all it takes time it takes so much time um yeah it's a full-time it's a, job it's, it is, yeah it's like a full-time job and full, auditioning is a full-time job oh it gosh, takes a lot of so. hours i know um mm-hmm. one thing i kind of struggled with like you know with at throughout the whole process of being doing this useful warm-up idea and um she's like mm-hmm. talks about condensing the useful warm-up into like what what you really need to be doing for the warm up, and I, I mean, I think, I think, evaluating myself, I think I've got a habit of over warming up. Is that even a thing? I don't even know. But it, I feel like it's just too much time spent warming up. So I'm just trying to figure out what for me is the ideal minimum amount of time I need to warm up. <laughs> that is true. Sometimes yeah. the warm up itself can be quite exhausting, especially depending on you know where we're at mentally that day as well. Like sometimes for Mm -hmm. me, I know doing long tones, even for 30 minutes can be quite exhausting. Whereas some days like, you know, I have the brain, the the mental bandwidth to do that. But then for me, it's always easier just to play through a lot of scales and work on articulation. Like that doesn't take as much out of me. So yeah, it's learning maybe how to, but yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, like how much, and I guess like it comes back to, because the useful warm up, I guess we're working towards it to just use it on the, before our audition day, uh, before the audition. So I mean, like, mm-hmm. how much time really are we going to want to spend warming up? 
uh, before we do the audition. Right. Like, to get it to the point. Yeah, because you definitely don't want to play yeah. cold, but there are happy moments when, like, at times when I've spent so, so much time warming up that maybe it came in feeling a bit fatigued. Yeah, and that's, I think, something she's mentioned, and I know my professors in the past have also talked about, is just, you know, this is an endurance this can this is mm. also endurance training like doing an audition because sometimes you start at 8 a.m. Well, like you you have maybe your audition at 8 or 9 a.m. Mm-hmm. you get up before then but then you know second rounds mm-hmm. like after lunch and then third rounds mm-hmm. can be in the evening or maybe if you're lucky they're on the next day but maintaining your energy mm. throughout the entirety of it because you can't make a mistake or your mistakes have to be yeah. to a minimum. I do like that she incorporated, she has this idea of like incorporating the pieces into your warm up. Mm. Uh, what mm. I did was I wouldn't do my whole useful warm up every day. I would kind of oh. centralize it on the pieces that were in my stack yeah. that day. So then I would kind of oh, work on wow. that area so maybe it wouldn't take as long. So um, I had Beethoven in this. Um, excerpt list and so what I would do is I do my like my Beethoven warm-up and then like if say Beethoven Mm -hmm. was in my stack that day Mozart and Mendelssohn then I would focus like maybe a little bit on oh wow you had a big (laughs) down yeah so I would just do the useful warm-ups as it pertained to those three plus anything Mm. that felt like maybe got left out like maybe I did that but there wasn't enough breath exercise so then I would chuck in like a a breath exercise or something and then yeah. like yeah keep that down so I think usually my warm-ups and like um and it was fun because then I could like kind of see day to day like how the, the useful warm-up would kind of change for me yeah. so but um but yeah usually it would take about longest 20 minutes I think so yeah yeah and then but then like depending on like if it was really bad <laughs> then I would sometimes revisit some things but um yeah <laughs> just as a warm up it was like okay this is a warm up it's not an exercise not etude it's not a blah 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 this is just yeah. you know supposed to get me get going it. so <laughs> yeah get you going get you warmed up get the blood flowing yeah, yeah. yeah. oh that's interesting okay. that's giving me some thoughts to <laughs> to ponder I like it I, th- I guess that's what Aww. I was really kind of during week three that's what I was grappling with and actually really for the rest of the weeks that's what, kind of what I was grappling with I, I never really got my warm-up to a point where I felt it was mm-hmm. like it always felt a bit too long okay so um, what's well, too like, long for you for a warm-up just uh, out of curiosity definitely longer than 20 minutes <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, like, I think I think sometimes with the warm-ups, because I think, again, I was doing all of the warm-ups for all the excerpts, so I like, so, yeah, it was, like, turning into, like, a 40-minute extravaganza, which by that point, you're just like, oh, my gosh. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Anyway, so I like your idea of, like, practicing the stuff, which is the, the, the warm-ups for the pieces which are mm-hmm. in your stack. I guess my, and then at week three, I did my formal mock audition <gasps> yes. with you. That was great. Oh, yes. It was so nice to receive um, it too. And just listeners, oh, she wore blacks as well. She looked very professional. I so <laughs> was, I was practicing properly. I was doing the full, <laughs> the full focus, um, which was, yeah, which was really good and um, gave me some idea of like, what what parts were sticking and what weren't and uh so that was really really good what I didn't manage to get done was um the friend check the friend check oh so right so where, that's where like, you get a friend to check on when you're practicing and correct you mm-hmm. okay yeah so they mm-hmm. literally sit with your tuna <laughs> and will tell you when you go off the green oh. well this kind of works um, out though because I didn't do the virtual yeah. mock but I did the friend check anyways more spoiler oh, alert fantastic. sorry but yeah so oh, excellent so I can excellent so you can tell me all about the friend check <laughs> but the the formal mock audition was really good because yeah it like I did everything as I was going to do it because I was going to record this audition so I set it all up I found it out, and I actually, I think I found out that the sound was going to be a bit of an issue, so I had to change, I had to change the position for mm. the actual audition itself, so, to make it a bit clearer. Okay. Um, yeah, anyway, so that was week three, wow, it feels like a lot, <laughs> um, didn't do, 
uh, the one thing I didn't do in week nine was find out how to make the challenging excerpts more challenging because they were still challenging to me enough, just as normal. <laughs> so I left them be. <laughs> yeah. How was your week uh, three? So I started my week three with, <laughs> I think actually begins the chapter two, I rewarded myself. Because well we were, you know, you're, what you do? Uh, I went and got ice cream in the city, and it was quite nice. So, uh, but yes, <laughs> so I started off by rewarding myself, um, and then, like as I mentioned previously, I unfortunately didn't get to do a virtual a virtual mock for you. However, I did have my husband, uh, a, a friend check. It was a husband check, though. Um, I asked him to sit That's down, and I played through the excerpts, and I gave him a copy of the excerpts and all of everything oh, yeah. written in there. And then he made notes, like, <laughs> I didn't hear these dynamics. Oh. You did the opposite. <laughs> Or you rushed this, or this was flat. <laughs> it was very good. He's very he's very good at that, and I've asked him to do it for me before, so he's got the drill down now. We're we're doing everything on iPad. We're very we're on the technology side of things. It's very efficient. <laughs> That's so, fantastic. Um, so yeah, so I did that. I was really sad I didn't get to send something to you though, but it's just been That's okay. yeah, next, next time. time. So that'll be the last time we work through this book. Yeah. <laughs> um, then, um, yeah, other than that, I can just continued working on my nitty gritty list. By this point, it was pretty good, I think. Mm. Luckily for me, the excerpts that they were chosen weren't so bad. The only one that was giving me a lot of problems at this point was Wagner's um, mm. Schmuggler scene. It's the one with the really low 16th notes that start on low C, then goes C sharp then D sharp, then E, yeah. all articulated, da, 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 yeah. and then they go into slur, so it's oh, like, wow. da, 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 oh my gosh, yeah. so, that one was still giving wow. me, and then like, how do I make that harder, start on B, <laughs> for the flute, good luck, <laughs> oh my gosh, and, that's like one tenth, yeah, I need to, right hand, I can see, yes, um, for uh, our non-flutist <laughs> listeners, uh, when I laugh about that, it's because it's a lot of work for your pinky finger on the flute and mm. also just like the mm. dexterity of being able to push so many keys with this finger which is normally quite weak even for flutists yeah it's um yeah. it's tricky yeah wow wagner why it did you ask tricky. for that and you can't hear very well oh, anyways so but uh, no you can't hear it yeah. anyway uh, oh. so yeah so that was my week three i'm i did my little my um my little friend check with marco did my reward myself um mm -hmm. and then just overall i was getting really stressed with how much time it was taking and i was not sleeping very well at all this week again so that was week three and then let's go ahead and see how our week twos mm. went so this Rock one was a really interesting week i found yeah. because there was a lot of like exercises that she recommended yeah um but um but yeah how did you go with week two so this is two weeks out before the audition well, okay, again, I was, as I mentioned before, I was struggling with solidifying my daily warm-up. It was way too long, mm -hmm. and I was dithering about which ones I should keep and which ones I should put yeah. away. Anyway, so I struggled with that. I never really came up with anything I'm happy with, but I guess it's a journey. So next audition, <laughs> uh, hopefully it will, it will be a bit easier, the process, until I actually figure out how I'm going to do it. I mean, it was encouraging. My naughty list was smaller, <laughs> as she said it probably would be, and it was. There's, you know, there were a few, yeah, well, there were a few persistent ones which stuck <laughs> to the bitter end. <laughs> um, but there always are, aren't there? <laughs> and then, um, yeah. but yes, the it, this was like where it kind of really started, for me, feeling like the momentum was gathering. Because by this point, like, she's recommending Great. that you work on, um, like, way bigger chunks of your audition so that you're playing through the whole list like every couple of days like so you're playing it mm -hmm. through the whole thing like at least at least three times during the week kind of idea um which I really liked because it made me feel like I was getting like a really good grasp and and kind of feeling more in the flow of how it was going to be mentally in the audition day like you know just with all yeah. Of the, yeah, all the material and kind of being able to switch from one to the other. Like I was finding that because um, that's really hard. Uh, something I really find so hard about auditions is it's kind of you feel very um, – it's it's really hard to, to switch um, gears so quickly musically with all the excerpts because – 
Yeah. For 20 seconds you're playing Ravel, then all of a sudden you've got to switch styles, tempos, uh, completely different colours, um, and, and you're playing um, Stravinsky, or you're playing Bach, or you're playing Mozart. It's mm-hmm. just so... It's one of the things I find the most challenging is just getting into the headspace of each piece and being able to do it really, really quickly. You have to do it in about like 10 seconds. You have to be switched into the next one. Yeah. Anyway. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not even the headspace of the piece. It's also like how you play the flute with regards to the tone. Mm. I mean... Well, I mean, I guess they're sort of related, yeah. But, like, you know, it's like, okay, for Ravel, Daphne, and Chloe, this is this beautiful work written around the same time as, like, you know, all of, like, these beautiful paintings from Monet mm. and Manet. And it's just, like, oh, all these, like, lush colors. Mm-hmm. And it's, you know, some dissonance, but the beauty within the dissonance. And there's yeah. a huge story, like, behind it. And then you go to playing, you know, like like you said, maybe, like, box um uh, St. Matthew's Passion, mm-hmm. which is still, like, a beautiful story. Mm-hmm. But the instrumentation, like, with Ravel, you have, like, a full orchestra. You have so <laughs> like, many flutes, <laughs> you know. And you have, like, this whole, like, string section supporting this solo yeah. and then <laughs> go to like you know trying to show like for Bach where you just have this wah 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 you know sound <laughs> as your background um only a few instruments but it's still like portraying passion mm-hmm. through what you're playing however it's like how do you show that you are able to change your flute playing in an audition for playing from a big with a big mm-hmm. orchestra to a small orchestra and being able to display that decently and then also remembering okay baroque music it's usually not as accepted for the flute to play as much mm-hmm. vibrato on there Plus, like, everything else that goes with it. Yeah. And, then, you know, and then there's always the part of us that's like, well, are they even going to care if I do that? Or are they just sitting back there with a metronome? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, I can't think about that. <laughs> like, And they're just caring about, like, oh, there's pitch. It's like not the the musicality that's being portrayed. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. yeah. So it's tough. And you have to do all this very quick. You do. So they, they say, okay, you know, <laughs> Mozart, Daphne, Bach. Yeah. And then you have to go from playing one right to the other and, and be able to show each one. Yeah. So, yeah I get yeah. it. Yeah. It's pretty, pretty, <laughs> um, but actually one thing which, uh, she gets you to do is, uh, kind of what is in week three, but just specifically with the excerpts is you put on a recording and you play the excerpt along with the orchestra. Um, I felt mm-hmm. that I, I really, I really had fun. I really had, but that was really fun to do because then you kind of feel like you're almost in an orchestra, especially when you put on the stereo really, really loud. Um, and, uh, yeah. and it kind of helps because it helps. It, you don't feel like you're coming at it so cold. Like you've got the, you'll start it, you know, maybe like 10, 15 seconds before you come in and you kind of can hear the music and where it's got, like you've got more context, I guess. And you can hear, you can really, you get to feel like what the other instruments are doing around you instead of just knowing what they do around you. You can actually hear what they're doing around you. And I don't know, yeah. but like when you're playing with, as soon as you add in another instrument, I mean, even the metronome, um, automatically the way you're focusing on the music shifts slightly. So you've always got a different, of course. Yeah, you know, you've got like split focus almost, like you're half focusing on what you're playing but half focusing on what other people are doing so that you can fit in with them. That was one strategy which I really yeah. enjoyed and, and I found really helpful, actually. The ones which I had the clearest sound of the orchestra in my head as I played, I found that my rhythm stayed more stayed more even and my mm-hmm. intonation, and I just sounded like I actually enjoyed playing the excerpts more. <laughs> As opposed to, I will do this. Anyway, that was my week two. Okay, so my week two. I really leaned into the exercises part of this chapter that she listed. So there were the accessing your full potential self exercises. And I was like, "Mm, this sounds great. I could use some of these. And it was really funny because she mentions this um, Vitruvian man exercise where like you're supposed to make your body kind of emulate that of the Vitruvian, um, Michelangelo's Vitruvian man. Um, And I was like, oh my gosh, this almost feels like power posing. And then I kept reading and I was like, oh my gosh, power posing. (laughs) Mm. 
Mm. I was so excited. I was like, yay, get to do some power posing. Oh, yeah. I, to, which, uh, for those of you who have not seen the TED Talk about power posing, go watch it. Uh, but it's basically how to like help yourself feel more powerful by posing like a superhero pose. Or, like There's lots of different ways oh, to do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. There's some yeah. other podcasts done about it as well. It's great. So, um, so yeah, yeah, I did some power posing power before posing. playing. <laughs> And um, I think I felt more confident while playing. It definitely kind of helped me feel like, yeah, I got this. Instead of me just kind of going through my little quandary of self-doubt and having an existential crisis about the excerpts. Like, what else can I give you? (laughs) It was more, hey, I got this. So, which is always the best energy to bring to an audition. So, so yeah, so I found the power posing one quite nice. fun. <laughs> had a lot of fun power posing around. Uh, and then I had fun as well. Or uh, Also this week I focused on testing the different environments and food before playing. As she mentions, I did not do what she did and stay up an entire oh, yes. night. Oh, yes. Um, oh, yes. I am familiar. <laughs> uh, I, di- I have tried that before for other auditions. I did not do that for this one. Um, but yeah, it is a good thing because sometimes you're just exhausted because you can't sleep the night before and you need to know if you can still play. And oh. it's a good wake-up call. Yeah. But um, I did try playing uh, the excerpts and doing a little mock auditions at different times of the day mm-hmm. like on the weekends I would do it maybe in the mornings and then at, at, in the week I would do like the afternoons and the evenings which mm. is really good and then yeah I did the testing of different foods right before play which was kind of fun because then I was like okay what like what foods have similar consistencies yeah. and like <laughs> have similar ingredients so how can I best like yeah. find the best way to like execute this food thing without going crazy and just trying like everything in the house and being so full afterwards so nuts right before performing or doing an audition I found not to be the best even after brushing my teeth they just felt my teeth my teeth felt all grimy so I'm not a huge fan mm. of the nuts um I also realized yeah. that gluten makes okay. me quite okay. tired. So <laughs> after eating like a sandwich or something or a piece of bread, oh. usually I would feel calm, but then also just not yeah. really all together there or present. So, I mean, maybe that means I have some type of intolerance. Oh. I'm sure I do. I have intolerances to everything, but it just doesn't stop me from eating. <laughs> Food's delicious. <laughs> so, um, uh, so yeah, so that was another thing I recognized. Um, and what the thing that I found worked the mm-hmm. best for me um, was just like, for the, especially for the early morning versions of this, it was just a simple black coffee, not burnt or anything, just like simple black coffee and a banana. And then Mm -hmm. um, eating, like, maybe a granola Mm. bar later in the day. Like, granola bars, as long as they didn't have nuts in them, or if the nuts were super ground, like, so it wasn't as noticeable. Yeah. Or they were stuck with something else, so they didn't get caught in my mouth as easily. Like, those were also fine. So, yeah. So, coffee and banana in the morning seem to, like, keep me awake, but also keep me calm. Um, and unfortunately, <laughs> she does recommend like going out of town for an audition, but uh, under current conditions, that was a no-go. So I think that leads us to week one, Jen. We're just cruising through these. Um, and so this is like the week before. Well, actually, I kind of, I want to know, I want to know how you felt in week one. Did you feel any more energized than you did in week two? It wasn't that I felt necessarily more energized I just felt like I was able to complete my tasks so like I was like okay I'm here okay. I'm, I've shown up yeah. like okay I need to like do the best and I, I remember I think at this time too I had heard something on a podcast if you're going to try and be creative you need to make sure that you're bringing your whole self to that time so like even if you do it for just a short period of time a period yeah. of time even if you do it for just a short period of time, make yeah. sure that you are present for the whole time. That way you can take everything in instead of going on autopilot, which sometimes I do. <laughs> a lot of the time I do. Because mm. uh, it's easy to yeah, just no. be like, oh, okay, Don't I'll check all. this off. Mm. So 
I was focusing on bringing my full self mm. there, which is well a lot harder than it's well, I mean, I'm sure it's hard for everybody, but just like not getting distracted and focusing solely on the music and not letting the other parts of you know your day or my day get in the way was quite tricky. By stressing about it now, it's detracting from the one thing I really enjoy doing and like want to do better, want to get better at. So I was like, okay, you know what? Yeah, let's just not. So it was hard. I did a lot of what we've learned with Smiling Mind, where it's like I would recognize the thought and then just acknowledge it like, hey, you're getting distracted and then bring myself back. And then like not any judgment, just like, you know, focusing that. So it took a while. But um, but yeah, so I think I was feeling a little more energized, still a little tired overall, but um, at least when I came to the practice sessions, I was able to focus more. Uh, what did you get up to? It was pretty much just the same process as what I've been doing the following weeks. I was a bit hit and miss, particularly, still particularly with my, with the mental training aspect. Like it's something which mm -hmm. I would do if I remembered it, but it wasn't. Oh yeah. How was the inner game of music going? Oh, the inner game of music was great. It was very useful. Um, and I had some great, great. Yeah. great thoughts in there. Uh, we'll mm -hmm. have to discuss it at a later date. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> no spoilers. Um, it, it was good. That was good. It was more just like the affirmations, like remembering to say the affirmations and doing the meditation, kind of like, well, mm. do we call it meditation? You know, the, the mindfulness kind of focusing exercises, which right. she recommends. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm thinking that I'm going to have to switch it around so that maybe I begin in the future my practice sessions with the affirmation and the mindfulness um, meditation. Because, yeah, I mean, I totally feel what you say. Like, after... After doing everything else with the billion and one things which are demanding our attention, um, mm -hmm. you kind of, like, I finally finish doing all of my nitty-gritty practice on my cards and basically I just get swept into the next thing I need to, I, I feel like I need to do and then I forget about the affirmation and the mental training because, like, I've put down my flutes mm -hmm. and I'm like, oh, practice, practice is over, quick, I better go and do that other thing. Um, yeah, whereas I keep oh, forgetting yeah, that there. practicing doesn't involve the flute all the time. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> so this is a growing process for me, Alex. I will get there one day. Um, but oh, yeah. Me too. I feel yeah. you. I don't know yeah. if we'll ever fully, you know, like, um, <laughs> like be able to do it perfectly. I think it's, it's like a muscle, right? Because mm. we just have to continue to work at it. The more we do it, the quicker we can get into yeah. the zone and the less we do it, the yeah. less quick we get into the zone, unless, you know, like your body is built a certain way. Like for many people, like for me, leg muscles are not a problem, but abs are, you know? So I always know that I have to do more with abs than I do with legs. <laughs> Same with like, maybe some people are more wired for mindfulness, but then other parts of the brain are not wired for other things. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I was, I was enjoying playing the excerpts, particularly when I got to play them with the recordings. Like, I just, it was really yeah. fun. It was really fun to do. So I was really enjoying doing that. Um, I was still feel, finding the, the challenge of playing them, you know, with the music just going on in my head. Um, you know, it's still, still hard, but definitely, definitely easier than I have in the past. So that was good. Mm. So, oh, yeah. that's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. But yes, no, I definitely... <laughs> definitely week one was yeah that was kind of like oh yeah the mental training section kept <laughs> being an afterthought yeah I wonder how we could like work it into mm. our practice our pre-practice mm. like maybe like like I know for me when I have the chance usually in the mornings when I'm drinking my coffee mm. I try to get in maybe a positive affirmation or something Ooh. and then like, if, even if I'm a little tired, I'll just start with, like, just trying to repeat it, mm -hmm, you know, or mm -hmm, something. Mm -hmm. And then eventually I 
Oh, usually I'm able to be like, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm here. I'm saying it. I actually mean it now. I'm getting it. I'm not just like, you know, I'm a beautiful flower. I'm a beautiful flower, you know, <laughs> or something. <laughs> I actually am like, oh, I'm a beautiful flower. So that's not actually one of my positive affirmations, everybody. Uh, but, uh, but yes, um, I don't know, maybe finding a way that we can work it into something else that we enjoy doing. Like, mm-hmm. I know since I have... Like, I have um, <laughs> attention deficit disorder. I know, like, if something is out of sight, I will forget it. I will yeah. completely forget about it. I will never, I will, I, I mean, I'm sure it happens with other people too. But, um, so, like, for me, I have to, like, have it written or, like, have a reminder pop of my yeah. phone at the yeah. exact time. And hopefully, you know, it'll come up or else it'll just be gone forever. Yeah. And yeah. I will not remember to do it. So. <laughs> Maybe we could put it like as like a little thing on like our our music stand like at the end, <laughs> just like a big like black sheet of paper. This is like meditate or go be mindful, <laughs> or like go you got mindful. this. Go be mindful. Go be mindful. That's my favorite. That's my favorite. I'm voting for that. Go be mindful. <laughs> okay. No, it's so it's so mindfully focused too. Go be mindful. Go Don't be come mindful. back till you are. Oh. I love it. I love it. So my week one, I did her, uh, I love this one exercise, which is funny Mm. because I do it to my students all the time. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, try to convince yourself, like the one you like the least is actually your secret favorite. That's what I always (laughs) tell them. So like, you actually adore this one. You just don't know it. So I think some of them get it. Some of them maybe not, but they they go along it anyways to maybe appease me. Appease you. (laughs) Exactly. Um, but yeah, so um, I did try that one with the Wagner. Yeah. <laughs> if you flash back to when we did this, yeah. <laughs> let me just staring at a lot of Wagner being like, oh, I love Wagner. This is I, just such beautiful I, music. I, I live Wagner. right next to his like Festspiele, you know, like, <laughs> you go see where he did this. Oh, isn't this just a beautiful piece? Oh, man, this is the best. So <laughs> <laughs> did it work? And it started off sarcastic, but, you know, eventually I feel like there was actual truth behind it. And now I, I really do appreciate it. So, and, <laughs> It helped doing the like orchestral karaoke to it as well. So yeah. that was um that I was love also that quite you fun. Successfully brainwashed <laughs> yourself. That is so great. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, so I was doing that, mm. uh, the I love this one exercise. I continued building on the practicing that we mentioned before. Mm-hmm. And then I was so excited because in this chapter, she talks about performance goals versus outcome goals, which were in the book that I was reading, oh, you know, yeah. as like my mental preparation, but the lore book. Yeah. Um, and so I, one of the ones I did that I try to change, so my... Um, so for the listeners, so performance goals versus outcome goals. Um, so instead of saying like, maybe I will pass to the second round, like, you know, Mm. you would say like, I will play my excerpts with expression and phrase as much as possible, (laughs) like within my ability, within my capability. So it's no longer like, okay, if I don't get past the second round, I'm done. (laughs) It's more like, okay, I'm going to play with music and expression. That's my goal. Yeah. Play musically and expressively. Or I, my goal is to uh, be able to convey the emotions that I'm trying to express Mm. to the panel and Mm. have them feel what I'm trying to express. Mm. That can be quite hard sometimes. Uh, yes. <laughs> what you try to express does not come through. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so yes, I was doing that, and then like another one, like I accept the outcome of this audition and look forward to what I can learn from it. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yeah, because it, yeah. With regards to my actual practice itself, um, I noticed that her number one observation from being on audition panels were intonation issues. So mm. I was focusing highly on making sure everything was in tune. Mm. Got Marco to be my friend again and just like sit there with, you know, my metronome, <laughs> my tuner, sorry, yeah. and just be like, sharp, flat, <laughs> sharp. Flat. And then I finalized uh, something we had mentioned before in a previous podcast. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was an audition go bag. Oh. And so I put an audition go bag together, Amazing. which was quite fun, which Yay. included like some nice medical tape for um, the lip plate when yeah. it's really hot in the room. Mm-hmm. So I've got some of that in there. I've got my chapstick. I've got some pegs, not for necessarily an audition, but like um, clothespins. So oh, yeah. like I'm doing a performance 
and it gets windy. Um, I put like some snacks in there as well, and some extra headphones, a tuner that doesn't is not my phone with a metronome function oh. in case like my phone goes bad, yeah. and then some extra batteries and some other things. And yeah, I just kind of had fun putting all of that together to get oh, it all ready. Nice. So so yeah, I also finalized my audition go bag in this week. Beautiful, and that was really good. So <laughs> so that was my week one. <laughs> that is really cool. But yeah, so how did your audition go? Yeah, <laughs> um, how did it go? It was. I, it went it went okay. I ended up recording it twice. Okay, so this audition was a recorded it was a recorded, audition. So it you was sent a, in a it recording. Was, it was a recorded okay, one. got it. It was a recorded one. Um, yeah, I just yeah, the first one just felt really. I still felt uh, quite unsettled when I was doing it. Like. Mm, like it didn't mm-hmm. it just yeah it didn't feel as settled as I wanted it to feel so I decided to do it again and it just certainly did feel more so I want to try and do them in one take because it is the like generally the first take is the most focused take so yeah. again I think like and I I think it was good like I definitely felt the most confident especially about the crazy super fast scary ones than I have before coming into an audition I felt like a lot more confident about them oh yeah great. it was great so that mm-hmm. part of the process but I think in terms of like the mental um strength and clarity of focus again because I didn't have the warm-up sorted up so I faffed around with the warm-up I didn't like really have a very mm. so I think even I just really need to knuckle down and um have a look at like like getting my warm up kind of solidified early on so that it becomes part of the process of getting in the zone for playing the excerpts, if you know what I mean. So, um, yeah, yeah, so that was in the mental, like where the fact that I kept forgetting to do the mental part of the training kind of Mm -hmm. (laughs) told a little bit. But yeah, I mean, overall, like I think, uh, yeah, I mean, the audition went pretty, like I felt prepared. I knew what I needed to do. I knew exactly where the camera was going to go. There was no normal faffing around of like, oh, is this angle the best? Oh, no, a double chin, (laughs) Um, which there normally is when I record an audition. But uh, this one was like I knew exactly the angle. I knew exactly where to put everything. Yeah, so it felt just very relaxed. It felt a lot more relaxed about that. But, yeah. That was my audition experience of the recorded variety. How about yours? This is a rec- okay. It's got this recording. Okay. I'm excited. All right. Yes, let's see this recording. Okay, here we go. So when was this recording taken? Oh, I will. You'll hear it. Oh, okay. I, I say it. So, okay, here we go. So the audition is supposed to be next weekend. I've been prepping for it. And I got an email today saying that I'm not invited, which is always a little annoying here in Germany because oftentimes they only announce when you're accepted to an audition a week or two before the actual audition. But of course, to prepare, you need a few weeks ahead of time to get everything really under lock and key. So... Yeah, a little disappointed. Kind of stinks. So here's hoping the next one will get invited to. I guess practicing today can be a little bit more relaxed. Oh, so, that happened. Oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, sorry for the bad audio quality. I was just walking home from work and I live on a hill. Yeah. <laughs> very steep hill um so um but yes so i got an email because yes in in germany it's quite often the case where you send in your materials and they let you know they let you know a week before the audition if you're accepted or not so i knew that it was a possibility that i might not get invited but i had been invited to other ones in the area so i thought that the chances were pretty high yeah yeah but yes, unfortunately, I was not invited. So um, uh, they wish me the best. So I didn't actually get to audition oh, after spending so much time. time. However, next time that the, Wagner comes up that on is, an audition list, you're going to be like, 
Exactly. Yeah, yeah, man, I got this. This will just be known as my period of mastering the Wagnerian sextinth notes. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, yeah, that's so that's a really great way to look at it. After, yeah, after I was a little bummed. Work. So. Yeah. So anyways, but yes, I think that leads us over to verdict, verdict territory, territory, potentially. So Jen, what is your verdict? My verdict. Okay. <laughs> how do you feel? How do I feel? <laughs> okay. I think, yes, I like this process. Um, it will stay on the stand, and I think I'm going to use it as the jumping off point for future audition preps. I like the space of time it took, like six weeks is mm-hmm. um, a good amount of time roll into it feeling very prepared. I mean, even though I, like, uh, did a little bit of the old uh, sabotage of not quite mastering how to say no and also uh, how to how to uh, f- forget to do mindfulness and all the mental <laughs> tra- training, um, even despite that, like, I, I kind of, I kind of missed some fairly major points of the whole process. I still like, I felt like uh, the the excerpts and and how confident I've, I felt with them, and how calm and kind of like in control of the things that I could be in control of, um, mm-hmm. and and calm about the fact that there were things which I were not in control of, but that was okay. Um, yeah, I think, I think that really showed. So I think, yes, I'm going to say yes, a resounding yes, <laughs> uh, in my verdict. Yeah. yeah. In, I mean, just from the little, uh, the verk mock that you did for me, you were playing with sounding fabulous, especially being able to switch from the flute to the piccolo. Oh. It was a really fantastic transition. It oh, really? So good. Oh, so. because like, I, mm-hmm. I felt a little bit out of control. So actually that was one thing I was thinking next time I would switch up the plane between flute and piccolo <laughs> a bit more, just to feel a bit more oh, comfortable. Okay. It did still feel a bit uncomfortable, but mm. I'm glad I bluffed it. Um, <laughs> you did a beautiful bluff. Thank I you. thought it was fabulous. So, <laughs> so uh, your your verdict? I mean, yes, I think <laughs> this stays on the stand. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just. I mean, not only does it really help us, kind of, you know, break up our time before an audition mm-hmm. very, very well. Like mm-hmm. you know, how she like you first start off a very flute heavy side mm-hmm. of things with a bit of mental training, and then by the end of it, it's mostly mental training because. In theory, your prints up our fingers and and breath and everything are under control. Um, I really enjoy that she like does that kind of like pyramid or shape yeah. <laughs> uh, with the with the focus and the comparisons to the sports too. I would say that like the regime unedited is really only for very serious musicians because yeah. I mean like it takes me many hours yeah. to get through everything yeah. and it's it, a huge time commitment but I liked how you brought up in the first week how you know you can take elements of this and start implementing them already with teaching younger students mm. so that if they decide to go down the aut- audition track one day they're very well prepared for yeah. it so I think like you could definitely take lots of elements from this and use it with students, mm. but the overall regime <laughs> I would say it's mostly for the serious of heart. Yeah. But yeah, so that's my verdict. If you wanna if you want an ace an audition, I would highly recommend this mm. uh, method as a way to accomplish that. Yeah. So or even definitely. a recital. I'm using Ooh, I'm yeah, using this recital with, like, as well. Gig gig prep. A win for both. Excellent. A win for both. <laughs> this has been a resounding success these past six weeks. Amazing. Time for a holiday, Alex. We've worked hard. Yes. We've worked hard. We did. Time to treat ourselves. <laughs> so where are you headed? I hear that maybe you're going to the islands tomorrow yeah, again. <laughs> yeah. I live in the Cambodia COVID-free bubble. Um, so we are allowed to travel uh, within Cambodia Fantastic. wherever we want, which is lovely. May it stay that way. And um, uh, so we're going down to the islands and we're going to sit on a beach for three days and contemplate trees because trees are great <laughs> and there's not that many of them in Phnom Penh. So I hope you write a moment. song about the trees. I will try and yes. write a song about trees. Alex, what are you going to do <laughs> yes. for your life? I think you deserve a holiday. What are you doing? Or have you been on one? I think so. I, I found out about the audition mm-hmm. 
like so we we finished up prepping for this a, a little bit before yeah. we recorded yeah. so afterwards um, my husband and i we went for a hike mm-hmm. um for the for the um the peak of pizzol mm-hmm. in the in switzerland mm-hmm. and it was amazing yeah. it's this like 5c hike and there's just like beautiful turquoise waters oh and i mean my legs were dead afterwards yeah. but i mean just getting to see these panoramas of oh, the alps yeah. and like get out of the house for a bit and because for the majority it's been like go to work come home practice yeah. <laughs> rinse, repeat, and then yeah. try not to go crazy yeah yeah so it was nice to just like get out into nature for a bit so yeah so as a nature i already had my little nature retreat last weekend it was amazing yeah. Um, my knees were definitely dead by the end of it. It was oh, like no. a, an eight hour hike total, oh, wow. <laughs> but, um, but worth it. Yeah. And there were lots of cute dogs on the trail too. <laughs> so, um, anyone who uh, follows me on Instagram at flute yogini, you can see some photos of it. Jen, I hope you have a fabulous time on your Island vacation. So that sounds fabulous. Yeah. I think that's our show for today. Yeah. Finished so, on midnight. Feel... Well done us. There we go. Oh, Boom. um, so yeah. So, um, <laughs> listeners, let us know what you think. Feel free to write to us at the practice odyssey at gmail.com. And music in this episode comes from moi, Alessandra Woods. Indeed. And the show art is from Ivan Potter Smith. Go yeah. check out his Instagram, it's fabulous. So, and uh, yeah, we'll, stay. we'll be back with you in a fortnight or so, and then share our experiences on the next practice method. To continue our practice odyssey. The odyssey never, never ends. ending. <laughs> <laughs> Just like the odyssey. <laughs> yes. Uh, and our joke of that never gets old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, so good. All right. All right. Okay, well, listeners, until next time, take care. See you. See you. <laughs> Bye.